Happy New Year! Yes, we are officially in 2023. How many hours in? I guess 10. I guess it's 10 o'clock, so we're 10 hours in. We're 10 hours in. So uh, welcome. We're so glad that you're here this morning. If you're joining us on the live stream on Facebook and YouTube, welcome. Uh, we're so glad to be able to be together. Um, my name is Tracy Linkletter. I think I know most of you, but if you haven't met me before, so good that you're here. Um, and as um, at Summerside Community Church, we are a community of believers in Jesus who seek to be equipped to receive and experience God's transformational presence and power. And so we're hungry and thirsty today as we come into this place uh, as believers in Jesus to see what he is going to do amongst us. So this morning we're going to be worshiping in song with our New Wine worship team. So yay. Um, and then we're going to be sharing in communion together. We're going to take communion during our first song. Uh, and then myself and Colby and Josh, your teaching team, are going to to spend some time reflecting on 2022, some of the things we've been teaching on, and then what to look forward to in 2023. So we're excited about that. So for today, so after, um, after the celebration this morning, uh, there will be coffee. So I'll just encourage you on this first day of the new year to hang out um, and be able to just connect with those who are part of this family and celebrate together this new year. There'll be coffee and some chances to visit. And the youth team, our Elevate youth team, are selling tickets for their uh, YWAM mission trip, which is happening in July. So they're telling, selling tickets for a fundraiser on January 21st. They're doing a spaghetti dinner. And so just to encourage you to be um, part of that, that's another way to connect and get to know people and support our youth to head out on a mission trip, which is exciting. So there is so much more to church than Sundays, so stay and discover more. <laughs> so um, let's take a moment now. I see more people have come in. Let's take a moment to stand, um, see who's around you, say hello, wish Happy New Year um, to those around you. And if you're visiting with us online, on Facebook, and on YouTube, send us your most exciting emoji um, this morning to say Happy New Year. We're so glad that you're watching and engaging with us online as well. And we just pray that as you're watching that you would also feel connected and that you'd feel the Father's love and delight um, that you are with us this morning in that way. So good. So good to see everybody connecting and to see the hugs and the smiles. So this morning, um, we are going to come to the table, the table of the Lord right away. And so being that this is the new year, that we're starting out this new year on a Sabbath, on a Sunday, uh, we want to come to the Lord's table, um, knowing that at his table is where we're invited, it's where we belong. And so for those who are serving communion this morning, if you want to head to the tables, um, and our worship team is going to lead us in the first song, and then we're going to head to the tables and collect the juice and the bread. Everyone is welcome, and then Colby's going to lead us in communion together. So let's, let's head to the tables and collect our um, juice and bread and celebrate together um, this new year, and we'll come back on our seats and we'll share it together. All right, go ahead, everyone. Lead my 
my heart to victory You are my strength and you always will be I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life all over my life I see promises in fulfillment all over my life all over my life I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life all over my life I see promises in fulfillment all over my life all over my life see the cross the empty grave the evidence is endless all my sin rolled away because of you oh Jesus see the cross the empty grave the evidence is endless all my sin rolled away because of you, oh Jesus. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises and fulfillment all over my life all over my life i see the evidence of your goodness all over my life all over my life i see promises and fulfillment all over all over my life I see the evidence I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life all over my life I see promises in fulfillment all over So Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians, he's writing a letter to the church in Corinth, and um, he's correcting. The Apostle Paul loves to correct. Um, he, he's a true pastor. Um, so he's correcting the church and their views and their actions when they're taking place, when they're doing communion, when they're taking the blood and the and the bread of Jesus. So I want to read what um, what he says in First Corinthians eleven, um, and then we're going to take the blood and the bread together. But in the following instructions, I do not commend you because when you come together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. For in the first place, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you. And I believe in it part, for there must be fractions among you in order that those who are genuine among you may be recognized. When do you come together? It's not the Lord's Supper that you eat, for in eating, 
Each one of you goes ahead with its own meal. One goes hungry, another gets drunk. What? He says. Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and humiliate those who still have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I commit you in this? No, I will not. Will not. It's interesting when I read this. It it's, sounds harsh, but I think it brings into perspective the supremacy and the divinity and how much what we do right now matters. That we're not just doing this to take part in something because we should be doing it. That this matters. What we do matters. And the Apostle Paul saying, there's people among you that are going hungry in your church. And you're more worried about this. There's people that are getting drunk in your church, defiling the house of the Lord. And you're not doing nothing about it. There's divisions among you. The thing with communion is it brings us together as one family. And if I knew my, my, my brother or my, my sister or my cousin or my aunt or my uncle, if I knew that they were hungry or they were doing something really stupid, what would I do? I would feed them or I would go to them lovingly and correct them. And that's what the Apostle Paul is telling us when we do communion. We are one family at the table. He goes on, For I receive from the Lord what I also deliver to you. For the Lord Jesus on that night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and he said this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's take the bread together. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this, is the, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's take the cup. For as often as you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So thank you, Lord. Father, we pray as we continue the service that you give us a new um, revelation of who you are that we can remember that what we do here matters that we are joining in with thousands of other believers across the world millions of other believers across the world that we can come before you with humility and understand that it's not us that accept you but it's you that accept us where we're at broken humiliated in pain wherever we're at we are accepted by you Jesus in Jesus name
Oh, 
Show. 
Jesus, we love you. We love you. I just, as we're just singing this right now, I just, I sense the Father's love. Just, he's so delighted. He's so delighted with each one of you. He just loves you so much, so deeply. And I just, I sense he is, he's speaking throughout this room this morning and um, he's been prompting hearts and speaking in ways and to different people to encourage our hearts. And so um, he's such a good, he's such a good papa. He really is such a good papa. He knows exactly what each one of us is walking through. And he just loves this morning that we've come in whatever circumstance that we're facing and we're just pouring out our love on him. And he just, he just loves that. It's like, it's like the woman with the alabaster jar who just pours out her last, her most expensive perfume on his feet. And he just, just loves that. So he's pouring back on us this morning. And he wants to encourage our hearts this morning. He wants us to know how loved we are. And so um, I'm just going to ask um, Pastor Andrew Bryce to come on up, our founding pastor. He had something the Lord had shared on his heart that I want to have him share with you because I believe it's part of how the Father is speaking this morning and how he wants to encourage your heart. Uh, this morning uh, during the worship, and thanks so much, you guys, for just precious worship um, there was something that's been on my heart for a long long time that I've just been waiting for and uh, an answer to prayer and um, he said to me Andrew just wait just wait and I said oh Lord it's so hard to wait and it's been so long and uh, and then he said to me there's many people in this room who are waiting on answers to prayer. And it's uh, in this culture that we live in of Instagram and TikTok, we want instant answers. We want quick fixes. And delayed gratification is so hard in our culture. Mm. But the Lord is saying, uh, to many of you this morning, just wait. You, it Jesus. may not be this week, this month, even this year. It might even be next year. But the Lord is saying, I am with you. I love you. I'm in the process. And there's grace to wait. Yeah. And it's his timing that when things just line up, it's like click, 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 and then all of a sudden it, it happens. And there's a, an answer to prayer that's huge and that you couldn't have arranged, yeah. but he does it on his timing. And it's so good when we wait mm -hmm. on him, wait on the Lord. Yeah. And last night it was about 1130 and we we're just getting ready for bed. and. I was reading through uh, my daily readings in, in Malachi that talks about the Father restoring the hearts to the sons and the sons to the Father. Yeah. And then I turned the page and, and it was Psalm 150 all about just praising Him for everything, let everything that has Jesus. breath praise Him. And, mm. and I just thought, you know, Jesus. we just have to keep praising Him while we're waiting for him to restore the hearts to the f of the fathers to the sons and the sons to the fathers and the Amen. mothers to the daughters and daughters to the mothers. Thank you, Jesus. And so if, if that's you this morning, mm. if you're waiting for an answered prayer and it's just like, oh, I just want to quit. I'm just, mm. I'm so tired of this. Mm. I just, I'm looking for an answer. If that's you, I want to, I want to pray God's grace for you to wait. Mm. If you could stand right now, mm. I just, uh, if there's something that you're just waiting on God for. Yeah. Um, mm. cause I, I felt like it's, it's, it's way more than me. Mm. Um, yeah. And this is going to be a, you're, you're standing 
before the Lord and you're saying, Lord, I want you to enter into this process with me so that I can hold on. Because he promised I'll always be with you. I'll never leave you or forsake you. And this this life is full of hardships. It's full of troubles. Mm. It's mm. it's it yeah. never was meant to be an easy road. No. But he says, just wait. Just yeah. wait. I'm with you. Yeah. So Father, in Jesus' name, yeah. for all those who are standing mm. right now, and even Jesus. for those who are sitting. Lord, we pray for the grace to wait on you. Mm -hmm. That you are so good and you are in the process. You are in the journey. You are in the waiting. You are in the anxiety. Mm -hmm. You are in the the worry. You're in the the daily detail of the thing that we're waiting on. Mm -hmm. The person that, that we're waiting for. The response that we want. You're there, you're always there, you're always present. Whether we feel you close or whether you're not, we don't feel you. Lord, you Jesus. are present. Yeah. And you're present this morning and your your love is tender and your mercies are great. Mm. And so we praise you in the waiting, Jesus. We yeah. praise you in this process and we ask for the grace mm. to not just endure, but to, to enter into joy in the waiting, Mm. to find your joy because you're present. And we thank you, Jesus, Mm. that you're in this process with us. Yeah. And that you never leave us or forsake us. You're always with us. You're with us when we're in our our mother's womb and you're you're with us today. Mm. And nothing takes you by surprise. So we wait on you, Jesus. We wait for the surprise of the answered prayer, Mm. for that which we're standing for right now. And we say, Lord, we will stand Mm. and we will wait. And we declare Mm. on this first day of 2023, Mm. Jesus, we will wait with you Mm. because you're always good. You're a good, good father Mm. and you're our dear brother, Jesus. And you walk with us. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Mm. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Something else that gives our hearts hope um, is testimony. And his word, God's very word, his scriptures, have testimony in them of his faithfulness. And I just, I'm going to ask Josh just to pop up um, something that the Lord has been showing him. He's been in Daniel. And I just wanted Josh just to share some of the things that the Lord was revealing to him in Daniel about waiting. Because we have to recognize testimony um, is testimony of us as followers. But there's also testimony in Scripture that we can go back to again and again to remind us of his faithfulness and just how much he loves us. And so I just wanted Josh just to share um, what he had shared a little bit with me as we were in worship. Um, And then we'll we'll go from there. (laughs) Um, Yeah, it's it's interesting when Andrew came up and was chatting with Tracy and I that um, just the synergy that happens when we're all Mm. trying to listen. It's that the Father speaks... um, is it any chance we get the lights up a little bit? Right, so see I can some faces. See people? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, there's just this flow and this synergy when when the Holy Spirit's speaking, and mm. you know, sometimes we think, you know, there's this disconnect between what I'm hearing over here and what you're hearing over here and everything. But no, there, when if we could all just kind of share together in some, uh, you know, I don't know that. It's difficult to do practically, but you would find that people are hearing similar things, and there's a theme that happens every time we gather. Mm. And, we're, and we're kind of in the midst of that theme right now, and because Andrew comes up and says, um, shares this thing about waiting, and Jack shared this thing about healing, and 
you know, anyway, this, the whole, whole thing's yeah. flowing, so it's a bit of a different morning, but um, it is flowing. Uh, have you ever considered how Jesus waited for people to come to him with their dilemma? <laughs> this is the God of the universe hmm. who knows everything, who was aware of the hearts, he felt their questions, and he knew their questions before they asked them, but he waited. It's really interesting. He could have just gone up to anybody and said, I know your problem here, bam, there's the answer. But he waited. He waited. And then even some, after he left, found their answer. So we're not just talking about days, weeks, or months, we're talking about years. And I've been, I've been um, thinking about this in the context of, you know, many prophetic words that come out about revivals coming and um, repentance hitting a nation and all this kind of stuff. And I was, I was thinking about this in context of that, um, but it's applicable across the board. And it's Daniel and Daniel 9 and 10. Um, and so I'll, I'll just, I'll reference a couple things. Um, the, in Daniel 9... Daniel is a, is struck by the by the words of Jeremiah. Jeremiah has prophesied a returning to God for the nation of Israel, and Daniel realizes in studying the words of Jeremiah that the time of Jeremiah's prophecy is now. And so Daniel he goes, "Oh, the seventy years have passed that Jeremiah prophesied, so I'm going to pray." And so Daniel he. He starts by saying, um, uh, in Daniel 3, it says, I prayed, Daniel 9, verse 4, I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession and said, O Lord, great and awesome God who keeps his covenant. That's a good way to start a prayer, by the way. <laughs> Tell God how awesome he is. Who keeps his covenant and mercy with those who love him and with those who keep his commandments. We have sinned and committed iniquity. We have done wickedly and rebelled, even by departing from your precepts and your judgments. Neither have we heeded your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings and princes and to our fathers and all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongs to you, but to us shame of face, as it is this day. To the men of Judah, to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, those near and those far off and all the countries to which you've driven them, because of the unfaithfulness which they have committed against you. So Daniel starts off saying, man, we have messed up big time. And, and he goes through a bunch of other details in there that I'm not going to go through because we don't need to. But just to give you the context for what Daniel's saying. So Daniel, at the end of this, of this prayer of national repentance, Daniel um, has this vision. An angel comes to him. And he says, now while, this is verse 20. Now while I was speaking, praying, and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God, for the, uh, for the holy mountain of my God, yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, that's the angel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, uh, swiftly reached me about the time of the evening offering. And he informed me and talked with me and he said, O oh, Daniel, I have now come forth to give you skill to understand. At the beginning of your supplication, this is what I want you to hear, at the beginning of your prayer, the command went out. At the very beginning... Before you even said anything, the command went out. Do you hear that? Before you even publicly repented, at the very beginning, the command went out. And he says this, I have come to tell you, for you are greatly beloved. You are greatly beloved. So, at the beginning of your prayer, now I've come to tell you and help you understand what's coming to pass, and I'm coming to tell you, and you were heard, because for the simple reason that you're loved. So Daniel enters into a revelation of the love of the Father, and that's the catalyst for the answer of his prayer. Not because he spent so much time, like he didn't, like, Think about this. He didn't repent for years and years and years and years and years. At the beginning of your prayer, because you set your heart towards me, I answered you. We read it and go, well, we need to repent for years and years, and the reason God hasn't answered our prayers is because we haven't repented enough. 
And the angel comes and says, you are loved and you're getting an answer because you're loved. Now, I'm not saying we don't need to repent. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that the revelation of love is what trumps everything. So you are greatly beloved. That's a big deal. So then, here's where this ties in to what we're talking about. Daniel 10. Okay, so the angel gives Daniel some understanding. I don't understand what he's saying. 70 weeks, all this kind of stuff. Like, the angel tells him that he comes to bring him understanding, and then it just seems like he confuses the matter. But that's because Daniel was smarter than we are. Anyway, Daniel, so chapter 10. So now, um, the chapter, chapter 9 starts off, and it says this. Just to give the context again. In the first year of Darius, the son of Az- Ahazu something. If you can say that one, that's good for you. In the first year of Darius, so this is Darius was a king, right? After Nebuchadnezzar, the Israelites have been conquered. They've been taken to Babylon, and Darius is now the king. So Daniel 9, in the first year of Darius, okay? Daniel prays. The angel says, the moment your prayer went out, it was heard. You're a man who's greatly beloved, Okay? Daniel 10. In the third year of Cyrus, okay, I don't know about you, but they're measuring these things by the number of years that have passed, and now we've had a regime change. So we went from one prime minister, served his whole term, and now, you know, think about next election we may have, 2023, maybe, next, maybe this year, 2024, maybe 2025, Maybe we have something flip, right? We're going to have a prime minister for 10 years, and then maybe things will flip in the next election. We don't know. What I'm saying is, in the first year of Darius, now we're in the third year of Cyrus. So some significant time has passed here. Okay, you see that. Not just a day, not just a week, not just a month, but we're talking about years and years and years and years. Okay, at least four years, because we're in the third year, but... More time than that, because if you add up the time of Cyrus and then the third year of Darius, it's a long time. In the third year of Cyrus, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. The message was true. Okay, the message was true. The angel came and gave him a true message, but the appointed time was long. How many have ever felt that? (laughs) The message was true, but the appointed time was long. So as Daniel's going like this. I prayed, you said the answer came. Why hasn't it come? So the angel comes to tell him, hey, that message was true, but the time, you don't understand the timing yet. This is exactly what Andrew said. This is what I mean. Andrew comes up and shares this, and I'm like, this is what I've been thinking about all morning long. (laughs) And I knew Tracy was going to ask me to share anyway, so I was like, it's right there. The message is true, the appointed time was long, and he understood the message, and he had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Now on the 24th day of the first month, this is verse 4, as I was by the side of the great river, um, I lifted my eyes, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose waist was girded with gold. So all this stuff happens. So this, this, he has this vision, this angelic being comes to him, And it says this, suddenly a hand touched me, which this is verse 10, jumping down, uh, and made me tremble on my knees on the palm of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved. I love the repeat. Same thing, man greatly beloved. Understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand, again, from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. I have come because of your words, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me for 21 days. I was doing some, this is the angel saying, I was doing some intense spiritual warfare on your behalf, and you didn't even realize it. Your answer came, not even just the day you spoke, but the moment you set your heart to know the heart of the Father. The moment the intent of your heart turned towards him, 
the answer started. And what, what was Daniel's response? Daniel's response, know the Father and humble himself before God. Know the Father and humble himself before God. The daily routine of knowing the heart of God and putting yourself before him. That's what Daniel did. Daniel's patience was, I want to know the Father, and I'm going to put myself before him. Because he was a man who recognized how lovely the Father was and how much he was loved by the Father. You're a man greatly beloved. And because of that, your words were heard and the answer came the moment you set your heart to understand. But you just didn't quite see what I was doing in the background. But now I'm going to give you some context. So just to, just to you know, those of you that are struggling with that, that I, there's, I mean, it was like 75% of the people in here stood up, I think. Like, this is the narrative in Scripture. God's doing something. You're, all you do is put yourself before him. Recognize, because the same way he says it over Daniel, he can say it over you. You are greatly beloved. Move from that place. Be moved from that place. Recognize, you're a man, greatly beloved. You're a woman, greatly beloved. Everything else comes in due season and time because the Father's working. But all you do is put yourself before him, humble yourself before him, and turn your heart to him, and wait patiently on him. It's exactly what Andrew said. It's what the Father's doing. There's, there, it's not a delay in prayer, it's a timing for prayer. Because he's orchestrating events that you have no idea, beyond your capacity to see, know, or understand. Daniel's heart wasn't to understand all of the events, his heart was to understand God the Father. That's the intent of his heart. And that's where we need to be. It's just in that place of offering ourselves before him. Again, as we've been talking this whole last year, moving from fear to love. How do I understand how he loves me and how I'm loved and let that be the thing that moves my life from here on out? And now I'll humble myself and put myself before God because I've had a revelation of his love. Thank you, Josh. Um, so the Lord continues to speak. Um, it's very interesting um, how Josh ended that. Something that I was reading this week, which I didn't expect to find this in Job, but it says in Job twenty two twenty one, just this one verse, now acquaint yourself with him and be at peace. There, thereby good will come to you. Acquaint yourself with him. Um, and as Josh was sharing too, you know the scripture in John 16 where Jesus says, in this world you will have trouble, right? But it starts out with, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Um, and he has, and we will have trouble. And so um, as God is speaking this morning, we just felt to share an update on how Chesley Chason is doing. Um, and so uh, thank you to Deb, um, who saw him yesterday. But he did get home uh, on Christmas. If you had a chance, or on Christmas Eve, he got home, which was an answer to prayer, a huge answer to prayer to be home with his family. Um, and his house has been outfitted with what he needs to be able to, to live at home. Um, and thank you to SCC ladies. Um, they've been given food um, <clears throat> since he arrived home until yesterday. So they've been so appreciative of that. Um, and he's in great spirits, um, just knowing how much he's cared and, and been, a, been loved. And he said he appreciates the, the notes that have been coming in, the thank, this, just everything that he's been receiving for communication. So thank you for those who know him and have reached out. Um, <clears throat> And he just got two new casts put on, Deb was telling me, um, and one has the ability for him to, um, it has a, a lever on it, then he can move one of his legs at a 45 degree angle, which is a big, a big thing. And so we do know that with physiotherapy that we, he will walk again. So we just praise the Lord um, for this, yes, <laughs> thank you Lord, right? Uh, for what was a tra like a, a horrible thing happening. Um, God moves through and works in those things, and as we draw close to him, he brings his peace. He brings his peace. And so um, something else the Lord has been, so as preparing for Sunday uh, today, um, I've just been in, I've been in Colossians and Ephesians, and just where Paul is praying, he says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. 
And so hope is so important as we wait to hear each other's testimonies, to know the faithfulness of what God is doing. And so this morning, um, Matt King, I'm going to invite Matt up, um, just felt the Lord impress on him to share his testimony this morning. So I want to thank you, Matt, for your obedience to listen to the Holy Spirit prompting um, this morning. And this is how the Holy Spirit works. He's in the midst of us. And so as we feel his promptings, and those can be in different ways, I know for me, my heart starts to beat really fast because it's going to jump out of my chest and I start to get really, really warm. But he has different ways of prompting us. And so Matt has... um, responded to that prompting, and I just would love him to share what God has placed on his heart and his testimony with us this morning as a way to understand the hope of his calling on our lives. So Matt, go ahead. Thank you. Tracy. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Matthew King. Um, we moved here uh, last November, my wife Shelly and my son Nathan, um, and love it here on the island. Um, I grew up in Nova Scotia, uh, in a little town called Digby. Um, wasn't much going on there, except for a lot of uh, stuff that you don't want to do. Um, I grew up in Digby, and um, everybody was thinking that the King family is leading the life. Um, I grew up with... Um, a father that was um, very abusive, um, suffered from alcoholism, and um, my older brother, he was 11 months older, um, him and I were very, very close and um, both received the abuse from my father um, in many different ways. and uh, it was hard. It was hard um, living that life and then trying to live another life, going to school, going to people's houses and visiting and putting on that smile and um, just living the life that, um, that you didn't want to live. Um, so we took a lot of abuse from my father. My mother was the type that would just sit back and she would just watch. And so it was hard not having a father and not having a mother um, to have somebody that could come and nurture you when you needed her. Um, So that was hard. Um, I was born in Yarmouth, Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. Um, Lived there for a couple years. And uh, then we moved to a little town called Brighton in Nova Scotia, just outside of Digby. And it was there that um, the abuse really started was with um, my babysitter. Um, I was six years old at the time when she started um, sexually abusing me and my older brother. Um, And that continued on for many years, probably till I was close to 10 years old. Um, And never really had a lot of people to talk to, um, just because I know I couldn't go to my father and I know I couldn't go to my mother. Um, And my brother was sharing the same with me, so we didn't really talk a lot about it. He just always told me that it was going to be okay, so I believed him. Um, That was hard over the years, not knowing what's right and what's wrong, and knowing who to go to and who not to go to. Um, As I said, that continued till I was 10, and then when I was 13, I made a new friend, um, started hanging out with him a lot, and uh, his father invited us back to his hunting camp. So that was, that was fun. Um, and then over the times that we were going back, he was slowly introducing alcohol to us. 
Um, and one thing led to another, and then um, I was sexually abused by my best friend's father. Um, being at the age of 13, didn't know what to do, where to go, who to run to. Um, was scared, felt a lot of shame, a lot of blame, a lot of hurt. I felt dirty. Um, I just, I was a mess. So the only thing that I really knew that I could turn to was drugs and alcohol. So at the age of 13, I started doing cocaine and smoking marijuana and drinking. Um, thinking this is just going to hide everything and everything's going to be great and I'll live my life and nobody will know anything and well those years slowly catch up to you and I was my life was just consumed with a lot of hatred um, a lot of anger a lot of hurt uh, didn't know who to trust didn't know who to believe um, so I ended up getting out of Digby and I flew to Toronto when I was 27. I didn't know anybody. A um, couple years went by, ended up getting into a toxic relationship with my daughter's mother. Um, August 24th, 2003, or sorry, August 24th, 2020. August 23rd, 2004 was the day that I became sober. Uh, my daughter was born. My daughter was born, and I said that I will never give her the life that my father gave me. So since then, I've been sober from drugs and alcohol. Um, fast forward a couple years, uh, 2012, um, it's when I met my beautiful wife, Shelly. And our son, Nathan, who I love dearly. Um, I'm just very thankful that Shelly's in my life, Nathan's in my life now I don't know what I would do without them um, being sober is one of the greatest things that's ever happened to me um, having them there and dealing with what I've put them through means a lot um, March 17th 2019 um, a friend of mine came to me and um, asked me if I wanted to go to church so I said sure I'll go to ch I'll go to church with you and uh, I ended up that year I ended up going to Toronto to the church on the Queensway and the service was about forgiveness and how I have to forgive and that I can't go on in life without forgiving. And I was just, man, this is hard. This is so hard. Like, how do I forgive these people? And in front of 2,500 men, I heard a voice say to me, come to me, I am here for you. And I got up in front of those men and I walked down to the stage and I fell to my knees and I was crying. And there was bright lights everywhere and I felt so hot. My body was sweating. And as I'm standing right now with Jack's hand on my shoulder, I felt that hand on my shoulder telling me let it go. You have to forgive. You have to forgive these people. And I was so overwhelmed with everything. And then when I turned back around, I turned around to look and there was nobody there except for Jesus. 
and it was the most amazing feeling that I ever had in my life was when I turned around and nobody was there, but I knew that Jesus was there. And ever since then, I've been a grateful believer in Jesus. Um, I have, I've had a lot of problems since, and I've prayed, and Jesus has always been there. Um, a year ago, roughly a year ago, um, my body was to the point where I could barely walk on my leg. My hip was so bad. I couldn't go for family walks. I couldn't go for bike rides. I couldn't, I couldn't go for walks on the beach with Shelly. I couldn't do things with Nathan. I was just, I couldn't walk. And I came to church one day and Jack was standing up front and I came up to Jack and, and Jack, looked at me and he said, Matthew, what is it? And I told him, and I said, Jack, I said, I can't, I, I can't walk. I said, my leg is, my leg is done. I said, I just, I, I, I can't do anything with my family. And Jack prayed with me and prayed for me. And I felt the Holy Spirit in my body. And that next day, my pain was gone in my leg and I was walking, I was spending time with my family, I was doing everything that I was doing before. And to have Jesus heal my body like that and to be in my life like he's been in my life is the most amazing, amazing thing that I could ever ask for. And with Jesus in your life, your life is so much happier. Your life is, you're, you're pure, you are, it's just a happy, happy feeling. And I know, um, I know a lot of you out there, you might be like me and you might put on that smiley face and nobody might not know what's going on, but Jesus knows what's going on. And Jesus knows that he is there for you and that he loves you and that he will do anything that he possibly can to make your life more like his. So I just want to thank Jesus for everything that he has done for me and for where I am today and the struggles that I've been through that he's guided me through them and he's helped me and got me to where I am today. And I just want to thank you, Jesus. I went to Matt this morning and I said, Matt, God has something for you today here. I don't know what it is, but if it witnesses, please, please let me know. What a privilege. Can you just stretch your hand to this man for a minute? Father, I know there's amazing release and blessing in Matt's heart today. I don't fully understand or know what you're doing, but when I told Matt in that foyer, he's going to the next level. I know that's you. I know it's true. And I thank you for that. I thank you for that. Precious name. Can I take one more? I had a word of knowledge, and it actually totally lined up with what Andrew shared and that kind of thing. I have it. It's on my phone. Shirley, can you bring my phone? Thank you. I actually wrote this down this morning before we kind of got going. Um, I feel there's at least three people here. And, and this just so fits. 
There's a feeling of unworthiness of his love, a feeling that you blew it, that it's too late. Father says, no. He says, I love you. I absolutely delight in you and come to me. God delights in you. Amen. Maybe at the end of the service, if that witness is to you, come let us pray for you. Thank you. Thank you for your faithfulness and your obedience to both of you. Isn't God good? So good. Um, I just sense that we are to move into a time of prayer when what Matt has shared. Um, Matt, God, God has given you the words to just pierce hearts, I believe, this morning. Um, and Jack, the word of knowledge that you shared as well. Um, and so I'm going to call up Colby and Josh because I'm kind of processing what this could look like. Um, and so I do believe that the Father wants to impart hope this morning. I believe that's the key of what the, the thread is of the morning, of the waiting, of knowing that he is faithful in the waiting and that when he looks at you, he says, you are delighted in, you are highly favored, you are loved. And if you think about even what Matt experienced and that um, conference you were at, that church service that you were at, Matt, where God met you and showed you how to forgive and how he touched you in that moment. You looked back and there was no man there, but he touched you in that moment and, and gave you freedom. And he wants us to be able to walk into freedom as we walk into 2023. Um, and whether that's freedom to hope afresh and anew, whether it's freedom to forgive, whether it's freedom to receive his healing touch, he wants us to step into, into those things this morning. And so I'm just looking at Josh and Colby to see if you guys have anything. Yep. Okay. Okay. Perfect. You, you, I'm going <laughs> to. Okay. Heather, can you come up? I, I think this is, is that going? Yeah, yeah, there we go. Um, and this is something we talked about um, Tracy and I talked about yesterday mm -hmm. is uh, you know I'm just trying to track with what what's being shared with the Holy Spirit's doing this whole thing about delayed promises and the moment of encounter yeah. and healing and fulfillment and I loved Matt's statement that he makes you like him and you just hear that through his story. And, and this is just the thread of, so many, like, like Jack had said, that word of knowledge, that there's people here who feel unworthy, mm. that, they've, that they've missed it, that God can't redeem that. And there's people here from what Andrew shared that feel like there's delayed promises and they don't know why. And so we've got this theme of the Father's goodness, and I don't know if he's good enough or it's not it's not actually the question isn't I don't know if he's good enough the question is I don't think I'm good enough yeah there's something that I've done that limits his ability to come through but like Daniel said there's stuff happening that you don't even realize that he's working on like you just if like I could just imagine Matt getting up there with the father you know after many many years <laughs> and looking down and the father going look at all those moments that you didn't even realize I encountered you yeah. and drew you there. I could just see him. I could just see him going, I delighted in you there and there and there and there, just through the whole thing. That each one of us, there's moments like that. There's moments like that that we have no idea the Father's been there, and there's moments like that that he's planned for us, mm -hmm. where he's going to come through, where that great breakthrough. Like, there's so many people that... I've been struggling with this or I've been struggling with this. Well, Father, why won't you take it away from me? Why won't you take it away? Why don't you heal this? Why don't you remove this? And, and we get caught into this cycle of I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. I've done something wrong. And the Father's going, no, I have a plan. Just entrust yourself to me. Yeah. Just entrust yourself to me. Whether it's the wayward son or daughter that needs to come home or whether it's the, the struggle with sin in your life. It's the same thing. Entrust yeah. yourself to him. Yeah. And so, so with that said, just this thread of what the Holy Spirit's doing, what we want to do this morning is we want to lay hands on every person here. Mm -hmm. and, and just as an as a inauguration into the new year, 
We want to bless you to step into all that God's calling you to step into. And, and to be in that place of loving adoration with the Father. Mm. And he's going to make everything okay. He will. He will. It's like, I, I love that, like, you can be in the midst of the great pain that Matt was describing, but also knowing that Jesus is the greatest joy. That's right. It's like the great dichotomy of the Christian life, <laughs> is I can be full of joy, but being experienced some of the greatest heartache. Mm. And so we want to bless you that the Father would be with you and that you would rush into the new year anticipating him. Amen. And, and not anticipating an answer to prayer or anything like that, but just anticipating him, him. daily. Because that's what we're about. We're a people of encounter. And so this is what we're going to do. Okay, well, I don't, well, can I get the, anybody in the ministry teams to come up? Mm -hmm. And everybody, let's just stand up, okay? And Heather's going to, I'm just going to turn it over to Heather in the sense of, um, of you know, leading and praying and, and singing and just engaging with that. But I, want, I just want to line up. Let's make two lines here. Okay, prayer people. We're going to make this nice and simple, okay? So two lines facing each other. We're making a prayer tunnel. This is the easiest way to pray for people quickly. <laughs> okay, so don't, don't go yet. We've got a bit of time. The kids, can st kids are still good. So just everybody that's a prayer person, face someone else in this line. And Colby and Tracy and I are going to join you guys too. And this is what I want. I want the church to line up. Just line up. Everybody just start lining up. Over here by Jack. Line up. Make a big line. It's the easiest way to do this. We just want to bless you that the Father would encounter you this year. And then all that, all that, the shame of what did I do? Do I deserve it? Am I good enough? All that stuff would just fall in the face of his goodness. So just line up. Everybody just come line up. And, and it's simple. Just walk through. People are going to lay hands on you. If, if, by the way, if you're uncomfortable with people laying hands on you, just let us know. Okay? That's so, just let us know. Um, so just walk through. People just lay hands on you. They're going to bless you. Pray a blessing of the Father's goodness over you. And so, and prayer team, it, just let them come through because we got a lot of people to pray through. So it's not necessarily a time to do deep prophetic ministry or, or anything, but just lay hands on, bless, release that the Father would encounter us this year. And just in, that, in this space of waiting, as you're in line, just enter into the beauty of the Father, those moments of worship. Just off, just turn your heart to Him. Expect Him to meet you.
so good with every breath that I am able. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your